Welcome to the Wonder Jam Cast. We are starting what I'm calling the Victory Lap of the Wonder Jam Cast. We've got a new podcast that's coming, brand fresh and new, that is ready for you all. And in this Victory Lap, we are interviewing the Wonder Jam's team. We are interviewing Allie, Ashley, Matt, and I'm going to get interviewed as well. And for those of you who have listened to this for the past years that we've been doing it, I think you're going to get to enjoy what we're how we're finishing this off, and you're going to enjoy what we've got coming next. So in this first episode, I sit down with Allie, and we talk about how things have changed in 2020 and into 21, 2021. We talk about the best type of clients that she works with, the characteristics that make people really thrive online and a bunch of other observations that she's had over the past year i'm excited for you all to get to listen to this it's a fresh new voice from her something brand new it's something you just get a sense that she's she's really found she's figured out the kind of work that she's really into doing and she's laser focused on it so i'm excited for you all to get to jump into that Here's Allie. Welcome to the Wonder Jam cast, Allie. Thank you for It's having nice me. to have you here. Thank you. I mean, I, this is my podcast too. Like, it's there's, m- yeah. It's mostly your podcast. Yeah. And if anything, we've recently gotten a new business partner. Mm-hmm. So it's less my podcast True. than it used to be. True. Yeah. Really. Yeah. You take equity in businesses and that translates directly to... And that directly translates to into ownership <laughs> of podcasts. Podcast. Yeah. Uh-huh. So this content is less percentage mine than it used to be, yep. but is still ours. Totally. And yep. uh, a podcast for the people, really. It's for the listeners. And the reason we're doing this one and these next sort of couple is because we're doing a victory lap. And the victory lap is because we are going to sunset this particular podcast and spin up sunrise if you will a new one Mm, i like that we're going to sunrise a new one sunset this one yep and the new one is going to be a little different it will but better i'm really excited about it yeah it will be better it will definitely be more consistent Mm -hmm. i would say that's for sure yep and we love uh, that consistency love consistency (laughs) so welcome And we are here on this victory lap and we're talking to everybody on our team and we're going to have you kind of jump in. I I think I'm going to, we're going to air your, um, episode first. I feel like first, and then we'll let the rest of the team kind of like roll sweet and then see if I get to interview myself at some point in this whole thing. I can interview you. Or I I might interview myself. Honestly, I feel like I'd be really curious what I would ask me. True. True. So in this episode, I want to hear a little bit from you. A little bit about how work has changed since we announced the sister brands. You are the managing partner of Wonderly, yeah. leading the charge on helping people with exceedingly special services. Yeah, they offer really awesome services right. that feel personal. Yeah, so we're going to talk about that a little bit, talk about how work's different. And if you hadn't been paying close attention to what we're doing over the past year, um, maybe you'll what, learn. Might, what, what are some things that people maybe have missed? You know, Over the past year, yeah. Um, well, that's not the question. They'll find oh, that through the oh, questions oh, of the oh, episode. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. So keep on listening. So keep on listening. Um, first question I want to ask you is a two-parter. What were you like as a kid? Mm-hmm. And how does that show up in your professional life these days? That's a great question. I feel like I'll, I'll take a very honest approach to this question because I think a lot of people answer it and they're like I was really curious or like I was you know I loved working with animals and I loved butterflies but Mm. um, yeah that's everyone else I've asked the question everyone just talked about butterflies butterflies. the whole time yeah Yeah. it's like it's it's so boring butterflies do I do have like memories of butterflies um catching them watching them you know live you're gonna do the butterfly answer now too no 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 sorry no um what were you like as a kid I I was really preoccupied with being liked and being popular or having a boyfriend. I wasn't allowed to date till I, I was 16. I love that having a boyfriend is like synonymous with the other two because it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like being liked by one specific person. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I, I guess I, I would lump it all together because I wasn't 
considered pretty or like like the other girls. Oh, so, really? You yeah, were pretty like the other girls? I mean, I I was. Now that I can look back on myself, I'm like, <laughs> you were very pretty. But you, you misunderstood the world back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to school, like everyone was like probably like Irish Catholic or something. Got so it. everyone was like blonde or like super tall yeah. and... Um, but I, so I really wanted to be liked. And I remember one time this guy named who really loved hockey, he wrote on our feedback form in third grade about the 4-H chicks that we had to raise. And he wrote, I hate that I had to raise my chicks with Allie. And I remember being like, I have to win, win his, win his approval. Like it just was like a challenge, which I don't have that strength now. I don't really care. Right. But I just, I think back to that young youngster. And, yeah. Um, but anyways, I, there were just a ton of adults around. I didn't have um, siblings or cousins my age. Like it wasn't until I was like 10 to 20 that my, my siblings and cousins were like of talking age. I was really artistic. I charged money for my art. I won competitions for my art. Um, I followed the rules. Did I you collected win like a duck things. competition? You like paint a duck that yep, won? I did. It was like the most accurate duck or something. <laughs> I wish that's what it was. I wish that's what the award said. <laughs> yeah. Um, it was for the Audubon. Yeah. Um, it was yeah, like yeah. their stamp painting. I did a. I did a. I'm duck. pretty sure we've still got that one. That painting I is do. still somewhere I do. in here. And I love birds now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I liked being home. I was like a homebody, and so I guess how that shows up now, I think I'm very aware of people. I think I'm like aware of other adults. I'm a, I'm an adult, but I think I know how to navigate conversations or how to be an observer because I was around so many adults. I couldn't always contribute to the conversations. I think that I'm good at charging money for the things that I make, but I still feel You're very so connected to that money. person. Like so many people Thank talk you. about what well, like I in coaching people and talking to other designers or creatives, it's always like you're sending out an invoice and you start to feel this like mm-hmm. thing in your stomach that you feel scared about I feel, charging. And I feel that feeling when I don't send an invoice. Yeah. yeah. No, it's like it's sometimes if I'm sending a proposal, I like write it up and be like, Allie, you send it. I don't even like double check my spelling. I'm always just like, here it is, da, 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 like attached link to yeah, send. It's really cool. No, don't look back. Just send the invoice. Send if you're listening invoice. to this and you have, and someone owes you money, you get that money. Yeah. Why are people trying to make you, yeah, this person listening to this, why are you doing work when people not pay you for it? Yeah. That seems really weird. Yeah. Wouldn't like you don't go anywhere. You can't go anywhere now except for like in, a state humane. park. And sometimes even then you have to pay. Yeah. 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 Get paid, mm-hmm. please. Oh, so, okay. So we've got, Obsessed with what other people thought about you. We've got artistic. <laughs> We've got you around a lot of adults. Uh-huh. Responsible. Now you're like talking to, you're like pretty comfortable around grown up conversations, serious conversations. Because I still feel about. like a kid. Really? I say that like, oh, I'm good at talking to adults because I don't feel like yeah, adult. Yeah, right. You, you, by, <laughs> identifying, like by identifying them as a separate group of people from yourself, you're sort of <laughs> betraying the fact yeah. that you don't yourself... I don't feel See like yourself as one of no them. <laughs> reflecting like reflecting on myself as a young person. I have a bad memory, but I don't yeah. feel like that was that long ago. You're like three little kids standing on top of each other's shoulders in a in a costume. I am wearing a trench coat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so that, yeah, those are so, me, my thoughts about it, that. <laughs> <laughs> and so in your day to day, that shows up in you do a, you do a lot of creative work. Yeah, I, I'm trying to think of like how it how it shows up. I mean, I think that I, I think I've worked hard over the last ten years getting people to like me because I want them to want to work with me. Right. It's not out of like now I don't care if it hates me. It's like screw you. You got over it. Yeah, That's I cool. totally am. Yeah, I've looked him up on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing well. <laughs> if you're listening to this, why didn't you want to do the 4-H chicks with me? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. If but if you could write in and just say that you, you regret <laughs> having said that and you were wrong, that would be really, Oh my gosh. we could move forward. Oh my gosh. But yeah, I, a part of me just feels like it's a continue, it's like a continual journey yeah. and I don't feel so much like 
Like when I was charging $300 for a painting when I was 12, I still feel the same. I can deliver. Like, that's great. Now that I look back on the work that I did, I would do ultra realistic oil paintings. I want to go back and be like, you should charge more. <laughs> but yeah. I don't feel like I had these. And, and sometimes I liken it to not having these. I think adults in general don't have these big moments anymore. We aren't like, oh, we have a graduation or we like have, you know, uh, a, a Catholic no sacrament ceremony. or something. Yeah. And I don't, we don't have children. So I just feel like this is just one timeline. Which is like one, cont- yeah. 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 The, so different than before. And so much like, and I think one of the things I've, the reason this question's on here is because you, I've watched you like find, you know, the past year has been wild. Mm-hmm. It's changed a lot of work, changed a lot of what we pay attention to, focus on, care about, like a whole different person. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you like see, I always love time hop that shows you like old yeah. social media posts and I was like, oh my gosh, that was like before. Totally. Well, and I feel like my thing. teenage years and my early 20s, 20s, I feel like I was trying on a lot of who am I. Mm. My, ki- my kid version feels so much like now. Yeah. I don't straighten my hair anymore. I don't really like care. I like went back to the big wired glasses because it's like makes, it allows me to see better. And but there were many years in between where I was trying to be a part of groups or organizations or, yeah, just figuring out who I was. Yeah, and you just found something that fits. It feels yeah. like the little kid, Allie, is mm-hmm. a little bit more present in the world now, which yeah. is fun. Yeah. Tell me a little – so over the past year, mm-hmm. work has changed a lot, team has changed a lot, things that you're doing. Just talk about you and the work that you're doing. Mm-hmm. What do you focus on? What are you paying attention to? What is there like – how has that shifted? Just like my work, really. Yeah, talk about your work or the business or yeah. I, I guess there, you and our entire business has been much quieter. Mm-hmm. Um, publicly. So it's not as obvious. Yeah. yeah, and so we're not sending update all the time, being like, "Here's the eight new things we're doing," or yeah. "Here's like the new project that's just launched," or "Here's yeah. all of that stuff." We've become a bit more deliberate. Yeah. Um, and so this is sort of a chance to sort of say, like, here's yeah. who I am now. Yeah. Like, how do you... Yeah, that's a good question. What are you paying attention to now? I think right now I'm able to really focus in on working with service-based businesses. So coaches, artists, activists, authors, instructors, designers, like interior designers or artists. Like, I probably said artists already. They're so fun to work with, though. And so I'm not really working with people that aren't really really closely connected to the work that they put out and I'm doing more I would say more websites than branding but I'm still doing branding I'm doing way more illustration work that I haven't even really shared a ton of which feels very connected to the work that I did for the first half of my life Mm -hmm. it's not getting to the point where I can't say most of my life you know because you're (laughs) like oh darn it um yeah. But things just feel more calm. I have more space to think and be thoughtful. A lot of different personal habits that I've made habits since even last spring. I think I've been I'm more clear on like who is in my like personal inner bubble circle. I think a pandemic forces that, but it's like who do I actually want to make an effort to stay connected to and being very thankful and close to our clients, but also understanding that it's a professional relationship and not trying to project a lot of what I need out of just like personal connection out of my my professional contractual relationships. Like I think all of those can have intimacy and um, connection, but they're different. And uh, I don't really work on the weekends. I used to cram so much into the weekends or yeah. like the evenings and now I have a Sometimes I'm like, what am I going to do? I mean, I always find stuff to do, but... We always find stuff to do. Always, yeah. yeah. I'm never bored. What's the... Can you imagine being bored? Uh... I want to, well, like, I interview even... someone who gets bored. Yeah. Or I even think of, like, getting bored. <laughs> interview someone who gets bored. Getting bored... Like, I understand the concept of, like, we should be bored a bit more often of, like, sitting yeah, around yeah, and, like, yeah. whatever. But, like, within... When I'm invited into board space, I don't feel disengaged. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like 
Well, I guess it defines what board is, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which is the sole focus of our entire next podcast is, <laughs> is uh, defining board? what boredom is. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking of how much I would not be interested in that listening so to or having okay, that conversation. I figured it out. Yeah. I figured it out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, um, tell me about the, so you're working with, you're pretty deliberate about the clients you're working on yeah. and working with now. Yeah. Oh, just such good people. This yeah. is good. It's, it's unbelievable. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm like so lucky. It's unbelievable. And it ranges in size and scope and type of work. Totally. So much more than I would have ever guessed yep. Wonderly would be serving. Yep. And it is some of our newer teammates. We're seeing uh, some of the people that we work with, and they're like, oh, yeah. them? Well, what's cool is our current site for Wonderly, it won't always be this way, but it's pretty hard to see our client list. We actually list out the types of people we work with, and if you hover over them, you will see examples. And I will be on a call with a current client who is in contract with us, who's paying us money. And they're like, oh, you did that person's site? Like, I love that site. And I love that. I think our clients aren't so preoccupied with what other people are doing. They're very focused on what they're doing. That is like, I, that's the secret to success probably. And I, But I think the there's so many people in Instagram world who are in comparison land who mm-hmm. are like, I'm a photographer. That other photographer just did this thing. I better do this thing or I better whatever. Yeah. But you sit around and in this whole new iteration of the Wonder Jam as soil and mm-hmm. we have sister brands mm-hmm. and these is came from just listening to our client, like yeah. the people we're actually serving. Yeah. Not, I have no idea what another agency does either. at either. all or charges or any no. of those things. And, and I don't know how they get their clients or... Or what strategies work no. for them or what how software pe- they use what or... What li- people live sometimes. What, what, what people, people live there. <laughs> That's a phrase. What people live there? I don't even know what people live <laughs> at those other agencies. I'm just fully being myself. Yeah. Because sometimes my brain doesn't... It operates too fast. <laughs> yeah. I don't know who it's works relatable. there is what I meant. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's that's who I work with. That's who you work with. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about those people. Let's talk about them mm-hmm. for a little bit. Yeah. What are the things that those people are doing in the help them being successful in today's world? Well, first is the like they're very focused in on their clients, what they're doing, what makes them feel intuitively in in check. I think they're very aware of how they are protesting or resisting in the form of their work so whether it's the information that they're putting out what they're speaking about on the internet what books they're publishing it's very counterculture which I love I mean it depends on what culture you're talking about but capitalism in general is very um making their way by accepting revenue but in a very resistful sort of way yeah and I read a lot last summer about this idea of kind of standing off and looking kind of outside of what's typical, but never fully leaving. Like you're going to turn back. You're not going to leave a society that Mm. actually is like pretty much proven to never work out, to be completely disconnected Yeah. unless you have your own community. But I feel like they're very curious. They're actually not very afraid of technology. Um, There was a while where a lot of our clients were, but they're all like excited to get their hands on the tools that we build for them. They're like learning new things that social media has to offer. They're selling books on TikTok. They're, you know, selling memberships by putting out reels on Instagram. And these people aren't 22. They're like 30s, 40s, like I think just like really understanding how they're unique and like when they're going to be controversial or when they understand what they stand for, yeah, which is really cool. I think that they're like forming new paths. Like we have a client that's thinking of their business structure similar to ours with soil and like the sister brands being kind of these sister plants and they're thinking in in similar ways or I, I kind of was reflecting like 
they're on newly worn paths or like there's no path yet. They're like very much creating their own impact. And I think just like listening to their own team, like everyone that we work with is like really respectful. They either like work with their own family and friends or they really cherish their own team members and like what their clients have to say. So they're just very thoughtful people, which yeah. is cool. Yeah, it's a it's just it's a wonderful it's like the best people. It's like the why sometimes you're yeah. if you probably went around to our whole team now and you're like, Why are you here? Yeah. Other than a job opportunity and something that seems like it fits. It's mm-hmm. it's these I don't get access to work with clients like this. Yeah. This like caliber of human. No. And we can talk about when like when things happen outside of our work. I think we all give each other space to have need extra time or I just told a client she's figuring out her own visa situation in Madrid and she was she asked for moving some of our meetings and I value attention and not just being distracted like a calmness and so I am willing to be flexible to get the kind of meeting that I want with the client and I tell our clients that I'm not just being flexible and chaotic just because I want to accommodate for you, but it's because I don't want you to be in the car when we're on a call. I want you to be like sitting down so you can see my screen. And like present and yeah. engage with. Yeah. yeah. And I know that that's like, that makes their investment worth it. It's not just because I'm being a, like a perfectionist. It's like, I know that they're going to get a better experience and I don't want them to give me yeah. their money if it's not good. Yeah. No, it's such good people. Six months ago, we launched, or September 1st, 2020, we launched the sister brands publicly to the world. What are some things that, so we had we had Wonderly Basis and Studio J. Mm-hmm. We've got a couple others that are getting uh, cooked at the moment. <laughs> they're growing. The, they're growing. <laughs> the seeds are in the soil. Yeah. <laughs> they're getting incubated. Yeah, sure. Greenhouse. Greenhoused? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. We'll call it the green. We have house. some grow lights on them. We've got some grow lights on them. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you put grow lights on seeds, if that makes a difference or not. So I don't really have the... I think so. It's important that yeah. we figure that out. So six months ago, we did that. Uh-huh. What are some things that people are noticing? I think we, we knew it was like going to be mildly confusing to the world. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew that rather than try to explain everything perfectly, we were just going to like exist yeah what are some things that people notice pay attention to what are clients realizing people who you kind of like share as Mm -hmm. you've gotten to like be the sisters a bit more i mean i've overall felt like everyone gets it i also feel like the clients we we had one we had a period of time where we were getting kind of like the wrong inquiries and you know it felt like I was getting inquiries that were meant for basis. It was like an e-commerce driven business. And so we would have to kind of do the pass off. And we found out that it's actually was just tied to like a referral, like the wrong name and link was on someone's referral. Other than that, I'm not really correcting that anymore. I think people who come through the Wonderly form, it's like they don't even need to vet me. I feel like they have been watching the way that we talk about our business resonates. My first call with them feels relaxing to them that this isn't, I don't get any more like, do you do this? Or is this something that you do? It just feels very like you walked in the right door because it had a sign on it and you resonated with that sign. Mm. But I think to all the people that aren't hiring me directly. So I think of like family or friends or strangers, they get it very quickly when I, differentiate between what Ashley and I do specifically and what business we run. So I feel like it's very clear and I'm so glad we did it. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. What's a, can you do, do like a quick walkthrough? What's your like elevator pitch of if you're Mm -hmm. explaining like, Mm -hmm. just the whole thing. This is who we are now. Yeah. So I usually say I started this business um, by freelancing full time. My husband came on the year later, a year later. Oh, we, we ran the business for- You don't s- even say my name? No. It's just your husband? Sorry. Yeah. Cool. Um, <laughs> That's great. I love it. I change your name every time. <laughs> no. <laughs> and then I say, you know, for seven years, we, we grew the business, did a lot of different things. And then last year, we brought on a business partner who runs the retail e-commerce um, 
division works predominantly in Shopify. I focus my time and attention on businesses who offer really special services. It feels very close close they're not selling a, a physical product most likely that's not like their main source of revenue and matt who's been with me and my wordpress building and designing days since the beginning will be your developer and we really focus on two different things one is building a platform that is easy for you to edit and once you get your your hands on the site you can actually get in there and make updates there's really nothing off limits um, and the second thing we really hold true to is presenting our work to you in person or on screen share, talking you through it, getting the feedback in real time, uh, making edits in front of you. We're not, we kind of leave our ego at the door and we don't take your feedback personally. And so I really try to get those two things across because those two things I think are what makes us different. I don't know if that's true, but I think that, Yeah. you know. Yeah. Aside from being like, we're the... I mean, with creative people, it's always difficult to kind of talk about like, oh, our design is the best and you can't no. really. Well, and that's like all up for interpretation. Yeah. Like, it's like for who? Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. That's good. You did a good job. Thank you. I'm curious to see as we interview more people on our team, how they. How they talk about it. Talk about yeah. it. Because everyone's different. Totally. I think to me, it's all just felt like so organic. Like it's felt so like, it's felt so human, so real. Mm-hmm. It's felt so like you said with there's a lot of different ways that people can sort of like on ramp into our yep garden yep um and it doesn't have to just be talking to you first and totally it's not yeah that's it's really cool there's a lot going on in the world mm-hmm. and so a year you know we're uh a year and a month past covid mm-hmm. shut down and kind of like throwing our professional world into upheaval mm-hmm. And then there's just, there's been a lot of things going on. How do you stay over the past year or even just with, there's a million things going on. It's like the last, you, it, it's easy to pop on the internet or something to happen in the world or find out there's like somebody sick or somebody's whatever. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of stimuli. There's a lot of things going on. How do you stay motivated when there's so many things that can make work feel like not mm-hmm. that important in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Like what are ways that you stay motivated and stay mm-hmm. engaged in mm-hmm. what you're doing? Yeah, I think the two reasons why I think we're different at Wonderly, I think has shifted a lot into how I show up in in the work that I do for free or pro bono or as like a uh, donation, however you want to call it, um, donating my time, my talents. A lot of organizations or individual people are not prioritized in terms of having funding. And so if I can show up for organizations or individuals who don't have the budgets, they don't have the organization to be able to lead someone through getting themselves a new website or getting themselves visuals, designs, things like that, then that's somewhere where I can lead. Like I don't even really need a lot of help besides their input. Yeah. So since last summer, after George Floyd was murdered, for me, it was figuring out how can I help young people like young people was at first was at first like my motivation, which was like, how can I help young people get connected to the arts or design or things like that? And so I found an organization called um, All People Arts, and they help um, really all ages, but I'd first heard about them through the art kits that they were distributing to kids. And so it's been really fun to just get immersed into their marketing team and look at the executive director and just be like, hey, I I can like just lead this project. I, after a while realizing like, I don't need to act like a vendor. I can actually act like I have um, skin in the game. I feel like I can act like an owner. Yeah. So I would say that has been huge. Like if I don't manage my time well, I can't help people with extra stuff i've also been okay with having like a day where i kind of slack off is like something that i'm afforded now which i think is really great i recently rearranged my phone so that when i open it i can only see things that will like help me feel better so i have like a folder called wear your airpods because it's like 
listening to audiobooks or podcasts or music. I have an app called Breathwork that's just helps you deep breathe. I have an app where I take pictures, but other than that, everything's kind of hidden and my background is encouraging. Yeah. Something that reminds me that I don't need to be on my phone. And I have a newsletter that I publish every Sunday, which helps me stop and consider things. Um, It's called a consideration, but it helps me kind of file things away, but not hide them in a filing system. Like I process things kind of on a weekly basis, but not all the time. And I have really strict deadlines. Like I have, if I, I present all my work to clients, so I have to have it done by a certain day. Yeah. And I don't push my deadlines back ever. Yeah. Except maybe like twice. <laughs> and even then I gave people... E- except maybe twice of, ever. <laughs> a lot of heads up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> except maybe twice ever. Ever. Yeah. I feel like you were looking at me in a way when you said No, that. no, no. I wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, I think all yeah. of those things... Um, you've, changed, you've changed a lot of how you're approaching... I, I feel like... In a person who gets to see you operate, your day to day is could not be more different mm-hmm. than I, it was yeah. two years ago. I read a book about boundaries, and mm. it was one of the things that stood out to me was why are you breaking the boundaries to yourself all the time? Mm. Like, why would you do that to yourself? And I'd never thought of it that way. And so, even rearranging my phone, I was like, I am on my phone way too much. I am shopping way too much. I need to not make those things so accessible. I need to delete certain apps. I need to like not make it easy for a while my search functionality on my phone was broken and i wish it was still broken because now i can just search through the app but i think that boundary it's like you wouldn't why wouldn't you respect your own boundaries like you would someone else's there's a lot more self-care in the things that you're talking about Mm -hmm. there's a lot more of taking care of you and even as we the beginning of this conversation about what were you like as a little kid there's Mm -hmm. like we're taking care of that little kid a bit more and you're spending yeah, time prioritizing like that. that. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what it's a self-care is like a silly word that almost means nothing when we talk about it. But yeah. for you, like, what does that look like through your own eyes? What is it? What are you paying attention to? What are you thinking mm-hmm. of? What's your approach? It's funny when you said that I had this visualization. I like all the, the shallow things that people attribute as self-care. I actually haven't been doing those things. Like, my skincare routine's a little eh. I don't take baths anymore. Like, I don't, I don't know what other people say are self-care. I don't drink tea. Like, I always leave it. It doesn't sound good. But I did prepare for this answer. So I have some quick things that have helped me take care of myself. Top tips. The first thing is not take things so personally. It's not about me. Most of the time, nobody is like, no one cares. Um, being clear in my asks. So try to be much more clear in how I communicate or if I need something. Sharing more of myself in the right context. So my newsletter is a place where I feel safe to share to like over a thousand people. That's not a small number, but it's not like Instagram where it's just like public. Spend time outside. How I interact on social media. I've been kind of bad at this, but I have a, I have a challenge where if I watch someone's story I should reply to one of them because it's weird to just look at everything. Like it's an interaction, treat it like an interaction. And if you don't have the energy to interact, don't just keep scrolling people's stories. Um, That's fascinating. Thank you. I would love, that's like (laughs) such a cool, such an interesting practice of being like, I'm not going to watch you. Yeah. Unless I can contribute something. Yeah. Yeah. And so even, and I don't react. I don't just do the like thumbs up. I say something thoughtful. Yeah. So it does force me. I always say like, I wouldn't just like show up at a party and then be like, I don't want to talk to anyone. Like, why would you do that? And then I would say like seek to improve or reflect on my own weaknesses. So that boundaries book I read, I didn't read it out of, I want to fix other people. It, I was very critical of myself and how I've not respected other people's boundaries or how I've not allowed people to operate freely around me because I don't have any or maybe I have too many. And my last one is just like a, a daily yoga practice, even if it's like 15 to 30 minutes. Yeah. Um, that's always better for me. That's cool. And What's, I can't do a handstand. Can't do a handstand. It it's fine. Last question. Yeah. 
I think you're ready for it. I am. Two or three lessons that have stuck with you over the last 10 years mm-hmm. of doing your own thing. Mm-hmm. Ready? It's wild to think of I'm ready. a decade of it is. you doing your own thing. Yeah. What are the two or three things that sort of stick in your head that um, you'd the, share? The first lesson is get your processes and your money straight. Huge. Two... You can require or set boundaries even if someone's paying you. Three, hiring people will take up a lot of your time. More at the beginning, less over time, but still will take up your time. Still will take up your time. Yeah. It's beautiful. Thanks. Thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks for having me. This is the Victory Lab. It's mine. Thanks for... (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for having me (laughs) (laughs) thank me for being here Thank, thank you me